everyone, in today's video we're going to be checking out the brand new DJI Mini 3 Pro drone and testing it out on location. We're just here in this beautiful spot that we're going to be flying it out in. I'm so excited. So I've got heaps and heaps of video footage sample and photos that we're going to be taking a look at. This drone is absolutely tiny. You can especially see the size difference when you put it next to the other Mavic 3 that I have at the moment. It's so, so small. So this Mini 3 Pro weighs only 249 grams and that's including the battery <laughs> poked me in the face. Not only is it really small, but it also films up to 4K 60 FPS. So I'm really, really excited to fly it out and see what that footage looks like. And I'm also going to be flying it with the new controller as well. So we'll see what that looks like. And I'll talk in more detail about the controller a little bit later on in the video. The Mini 3 Pro has a one over 1.3 inch sensor. We have a 48 megapixel camera with a 6.7 millimeter F1.7 fixed aperture lens, which is a full frame equivalent of 24 millimeters. In video, we can record 1080p and 4K footage in 25, 30, 50, and 60p, which is an improvement from the Mini 2, where you could only film those frame rates at 2.7K. We can also do 120 FPS in 1080p. So I feel like the normal controllers straight out of the box are a little bit more sensitive than what I'm used to with the Mavic 3. So I think I do need to tweak the sensitivity settings for the normal controls. But for the time being, I'm gonna fly it in cine mode as I like those slower, softer settings. With the standard battery, which keeps the drone at 249 grams, you can fly up to 34 minutes. You can also get a higher capacity battery that allows you to fly up to 47 minutes with the Fly More Plus kit, which is what I have. And and this brings the weight of the drone to 289 grams. Also, before we continue, full disclaimer that DJI did send me this drone to be able to test it out, but all thoughts and opinions are my own. The Mini 3 Pro has up to 10.5 meters per second wind resistance, and it was pretty breezy during the mountains and both beach locations. I keep the drone still for a second, and you can see just how much the trees are moving here. So the gimbal makes adjustments to keep the footage steady, so when you're flying, it looks smooth, and you can really see that in this sped up footage. Oops, are you seeing that cloud? Oh, that's where that's what I'm filming. I better get my shot and get out of there. So I want to try out D-Cine like, which is like D-Log. So I'm going to tap here and press D-Cine like. And I'm going to point it in this direction because we have a lot of darkness in the mountains and bright spots in the sky there as well. We have a decent amount of information in our D-Cine like file. So I was able to balance the bright highlights and dark shadows in the footage. You can only record in H.265 when in 50 or 60p. And you have the option between H.265 or H.265 when in 25 or 30 FPS. I really love what this footage looks like. It's kind of hard to believe that this is coming from such a small drone. The colors of the video files look great in my opinion. We have a lot of definition and details in the landscape. The video footage is nice and sharp as well. However, when we had some deep shadows, I did notice some noise even at base ISO of the darkest parts of the footage. For the size and price point of this drone, I do think that this image quality is amazing. All the footage you're seeing in this video, I filmed without an ND filter, but I asked and according to DJI, there will be ND filters available. I can see it's going to have a similar click-in system like the Mavic 3. The next thing I want to dive into because I am so, so excited about this and I'm pretty sure you will be as well, is that with the Mini 3 Pro, we now have native vertical shooting available in both photo and video, which is so cool. So if you are a drone videographer who posts to social media, you don't need to be cropping your landscape video anymore. You will have that full resolution vertical video to upload. And if you're a drone photographer, again, you don't need to be cropping your landscape compositions to get a portrait orientation photo. So I have the vertical shooting mapped as a shortcut to my C2 button on the back of my controller. So when I press that, it's just gonna quickly switch to vertical shooting. And as you can see, we've got the whole resolution it's a little funny getting used to it panning up and down when you're in vertical mode, but yeah, this is gonna be so, so handy for so many people. So here's an example of the 4K portrait mode video. This is what it looks like at 100% crop, and here it is filling the 4K frame when you rotate it back to landscape. Oh, the controllers. My hands are so cold. <laughs> when I looked at them, I was like, oh, how am I gonna fly that? 
Okay, so I have the Mavic 3 with me as well. And I want to take a, as similar as I can, like side by side shot of the same thing with the Mini 3 Pro and the Mavic 3. So we can put up both footages side by side. They're both in 4K 50p. And I'm going to try and get like very similar settings between the two as well. One of the main differences you can see when looking at these drones side by side is that we have increased dynamic range in the Mavic 3. But when you zoom in, you can see the quality of the Mini 3 Pro is there, it's nice and sharp and holds up well against the Mavic 3 which is at a higher price point. Both drones look super steady in both locations as well. At the beach in brighter sunlight, the drones look so similar. There is still extra definition in the sky and more sharpness with the raw Mavic 3 footage, but when you grade the Mini 3 Pro, it's a lot harder to tell them apart. Let me know what you think of these comparisons in the comments. Wow, the clouds are flying so fast. It looks so good. Oh, I just switched to video mode again. I can never decide whether I want photo or video when I've got a good shot of something. Um, but I do like that we've got the little shortcuts on the back of the controller. So if you press that, it switches to photo mode. And if you press that, it switches back to video mode. So I can get a little bit of both. I really like the process of taking a photo with this controller. Just like a camera, you half press the photo button to lock focus and then fully press it down to take a photo. We have two different photo modes with this drone, so I've taken examples with each of them from the exact same spot. On the left, we have the normal photo mode. As you can see, it's a smaller resolution file. And on the right, we have the 48 megapixel photo mode. As you can see, it's a larger file. So if I zoom in to 100% here on this rock and then zoom in on the 48 megapixel file, you can see just how much more resolution we have in this image. But as you can see, we mostly only have added resolution to the 48 megapixel file. Both photos look nice and sharp with good colors and pretty much the same amount of dynamic range. So you would use normal photo mode if you wanted to take more photos faster. As you can see, it does take a moment longer for the 48 megapixel file to save and be ready for another photo. This is a 48 megapixel file and you can see my camera settings up here. I took this photo quite underexposed as I wanted to see how much dynamic range and what was recoverable with this file and I think we have a very nice amount of details in the shadows and the highlights that we were able to save. Something that I did notice with some of these files is that towards the corners we do have a fair amount of red noise but I was able to fix that up just by using noise reduction here in Lightroom and by bringing up the color slider and that's cleaned it up really nicely. Here's another photo that I took during golden hour. I'm going to apply my Aspen preset and just bring the exposure down and as you can see again we've got a really nice range of colors and dynamic range in this photo. Again, we have some minor noise in the corner, but it's not as noticeable since this image is correctly exposed. And here's another file that I wanted to share with you because we have a lot of colors to look at here. So I'm gonna go into HSL and in saturation, I'm gonna move some of these sliders around just to show you that we have quite a lot of control over each of the colors of the files of the Mini 3 Pro. So I can increase the yellows, I can make this super vibrant if I want. And there's just heaps to play with here, which is really nice to see. We have a new controller with the Mini 3 Pro as well. It feels really light and really comfortable to hold as well. It's got a nice big screen on the front. And we've got a few buttons too, not too many, which I like, it's nice and simple. So we've got the two controls here at the front. We have a home button and an on and off button. And we also have the dial to switch between Cine, normal and sports mode. On the back we have the record and photo button and we also have two dials. One is to tilt the camera up and down and the other one is to zoom. There are also two shortcut buttons, two custom buttons on the back of the controller which fit really nicely when you're holding it just under your middle finger here. And I've got C1 set to tilt the camera from landscape straight to 90 degrees and I've got the C2 button set to change the orientation from landscape to portrait. The screen is really nice and clear. It's super easy to see what you're filming. It's nice and sharp and the colors look true to the video files as well. I compared it on my computer and I find that it's still pretty easy to see in daylight. It's kind of like looking at a phone. Also, I mentioned it before, but if you get the Fly More kit, uh, the drone and the controller and the battery pack fits in this little side bag that you get. <laughs> I also tested out a few intelligent functions. The Mini 3 Pro supports master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, panoramas, and tracking. 
I tried out these circle quick shots, which works really well. This is also a super easy way to get cinematic footage. I also did a quick hyperlapse and I like how it creates a video file for you, but you also have access to all the raw images too if you want to edit the photos. Last but not least, we're going to test out obstacle avoidance and subject track with Dan mountain biking in this cool fire trail. Something to note is that the Mini 3 Pro doesn't currently support any of these intelligent functions such as tracking and hyperlapse in vertical orientation. You can only do them in standard landscape. I would love to see this feature added in a future firmware update. Overall, I'm really impressed with the active track. This was not an easy location to track a moving subject as it's a crowded fire trail with lots of big trees, dappled sunlight and shadows. At first, I was a little too far away from Dan, so the active track lost sight of him twice because he is wearing all black and I'm assuming he just blended into the shadows too much for the drone to see. When I got in a bit closer, I was able to track him up and down the mountain four times total without any issues. The Mini 3 Pro does a great job at avoiding obstacles. I have it set to bypass rather than break. And I'll speed up some of this tracking footage so you can see how smooth it is when it's flying around the trees. This drone has six obstacle avoidance sensors, two on the top, two on the bottom, and two facing the back. It did go off course once while tracking Dan, so I decided to manually bring the drone back to the path just to be safe. But aside from that instance, it was able to track him without me having to do anything. So that's it for my review of the Mini 3 Pro. Let me know what you think of this drone down in the comments below. What do you think of the quality? Do you think it's worth it? Are you gonna go for it or not? But as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I make new videos every single week, so I will see you all next time. Bye.